Don't you know that the music should be soft? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is it about you and that that hair? Like, what is it about you and that face, that smile, <laughs> with that bullshit mustache trying to look like me? Like, what happened to your hair? I want your hair, Rossi. I know. You know what it is. I, you know, I'm, I've, I've taken that lesson of growing my hair out between rolls, right? Yeah. And for the last roll, I had lo the longest hair I've ever had was this roll that I just yeah. finished. Yeah. So this is truly the longest my hair has ever been. And now people understand my hair does not grow down. It grows up and to the side. <laughs> my wife says you look like a Chia pet, if anybody's old <laughs> enough to remember what those are. Um but this is what it is. And uh, I guess when you have all these different mixes in you, which will come out in this episode, um, this is how my hair grows. So this is me. No, <laughs> this is it. And there's a song and there's, this is me. This is and, me. And if I look at me, if I may, like this, these sideburns, and this is probably going to be gone. We're yeah. figuring it all out. My hair yeah. is going to be, it's a period piece, Rossi. Yeah. I yeah. can't talk about it yet, no, but I'm going to be able to soon. And but you know, crazy. you know the deal. You're you you and I. You you know, you're one of the ones who taught me this. It's like it, it's easier to go down on yeah. your hair and your beard and your mustache than it is to add on. And yeah. I, you know, as character actors, like we we have to adapt to the roles we play. Yeah. We play real people. We play you know blue collar people. We play all different people. We lose. We gain weight. We do whatever. But the thing is, is that I didn't know this when I first started acting and I would just always shave my head. And I didn't realize how many roles I was losing because people are like, oh, we don't want to wig you up and it That's might be right. fake, you know? So you, if you have a shaved head, which I did for a long time between Sons and even before Sons, I was playing a specific type of role. Right. I couldn't play the 1920s greaser or the, or the, you know, the, the, the fifties. Well, you, you can, but most of these producers don't have that wherewithal of thinking let's wig them up or let's, you know what I mean? They can't think past the box half the time. So it's better to be long, scraggy, skinny or fat than lose or gain and cut. Yes. For every role you do. Cause we're character actors, Rossi. That's yeah. It's do. funny. All my meetings now, and they're all on zoom. It's like the second, you know, the screen pops on. It's, I would say nine and a half out of 10 times they go, oh, wow, you have hair. I'm like, yeah, exactly. I do. I, do. I don't have a mohawk. <laughs> I don't have a shaved head. I actually have hair. I don't have and then when they see hair. this hair, they're like, what? Wait a are second. Wig on? Are you wigging it up right now? <laughs> you got a little like uh, Diana Ross thing going on there, baby. This, is, this is definitely a, a, a Shaka Khan moment I'm having. So. Listen, man, um, we're rolling right along here. Uh, we are now about to start season. I mean, we're in season four, but we're just about to start episode three. Where's the time going? Doryless. Yeah. What does it mean? Any idea? I didn't know. I it figured up. you. I figured you'd look there. No, I. Uh, you didn't. You know, if you want to talk about Dayton Cali, go ahead. Let me let me just check it out here. Yeah, I thought that's what you do. But you know, I, here now while you're doing that, here's what I'm going to talk about. Please. So then, you know, today's fun because we get to record our other show as well, our theory show. I'm um, so looking forward to that, Ross. Yeah, me too, because we're doing a show about, uh, you know, mental health and mental yeah. health awareness and all that. So that's at our Patreon page. Everybody knows about that. Um, but while you're here and Kim's uh, uh, wherever you it. are, you know, subscribe like do all that uh kim tell me what dory list means holy crap let's just see if we can get any kind of oh sh shit that makes sense hang on can you get can yeah you see? i see it yeah i mean it's a phone to so the people who okay. are listening can dory list, also known as driver ants yeah there yeah. you go yeah, that's about halfway through this episode. Beautiful CGI on that. Oh, fuck me. And I remember being there. That? Yeah, I was in the makeup trailer and I said, how the fuck are you going to do that? And I don't want to, you know, ruin what's coming later. But fuck that you CGI. Ruin I, I thought try. they were going to do it for real. Yeah, no, the ants wanted too much money. <laughs> uh, the, the ant wrangler told me later they wanted way too much money. They went on strike. And so the CGI boys stepped in and said, well, fuck the ants. We're going to make them up. 
Yeah, well, so when we get pissed to, off and got drunk. When we get to season seven, I actually did work with a cockroach, a real one. We talked about that. Yes, later, you huh? a real did. one. And he was fucking fantastic, or she. He was amazing. Was he named Harry or something? I can't yeah, remember. Yeah, amazing cockroach. Um, okay, so wait. So Doryless, we're saying that right, right? Sure, Doryless, yeah. Okay. So before we get into this episode, um, you know, season four is such a pivotal change. We've talked about this in a couple of ways. And there's a lot going on that I'm noticing already. We're in episode three. We got a ways to go on this journey of season four. Correct. But the main thing we've talked about this is the stunning difference in the way it looks. This episode is directed by Peter Weller. who First, if you time, don't, we, for, first time we had him, I think, right, see? First time ever. He did such a good job on this. Holy episode. fuck. Holy balls. shit, the camera fucking work? Are you joking? Okay, so anybody who's listening to this, Peter Weller is famous for RoboCop. Playing, playing RoboCop. He He's was the he was the original RoboCop. He was He's the, the original RoboCop, really the only RoboCop. And then even though Gary Oldman was in the second one, so I can't knock it too bad. No. I mean, not the second one, the remake. It, yeah. I mean, it, it was hot trash, but he was Gary Oldman's fucking great and everything. So <laughs> Peter Weller, Buckaroo Banzai, as eccentric and when he came to direct it's fucking peter weller it's fucking robocop right and he is a unique bastard in every way <laughs> he collects he, the coins he truly, he's got 40 he scarves truly, on oh my god cigars everywhere scarves on knew exactly when he wanted put the red carpet down for all of us leads on the show do what you want let's let's work around it then this is what i think he was never afraid to say what he thought. His camera work on this show was spectacular. Do you spectacular. hear them in the back? Do you no, hear the, kids? What was it? The, the puppies? You hear Arla? Yeah. That's my son. Him and yeah. the dog. The dog is chasing him everywhere around the house. It's absolute, it's yeah. chaos. They're about to leave. They, they're, they're running birthday late. party. Your little birthday I thought they're party. going to two birthday parties in a row and it's pure chaos in this house. So here's what's funny. Peter Weller, this is his first one. We're all excited. Here's something that I was thinking about that you know, that is in, in television, in a big television series, there's a look. There's a way the show is looks that when a director comes in, they almost have to exactly. fit into the box the of look. the way that exactly the show right. is set, right? Exactly right. So they'll get... Uh, notes from the showrunners, from the producers, from from which like, hey, this is the way our show looks. You can't go too crazy. You can't go too cowboy. You can't go too maverick on it. This is the way the show looks. And remember, Peter, I'm just going to interject. Peter was given episodes one and two, even though they weren't cut together yet. He was given the dailies get to look at them, to get the feel for this year, the yes. new cameras we had. So he he would have some pretty good knowledge as to what he needed to do to make this show different, but the same. Yeah. And, and then at the same time as a director and Peter really had just started directing then yeah, man. TV, uh, you know, he, he directs TV. He, he really had just started. He wants to make his own mark in, Absolutely. in the way, in the way it's going to look different. This to me, and I probably wrote it 10 times. Um, I've, there were camera angles that happened in this that I was like, what? oh my God, like how did like Where? the slow pans and the, the there's wrap around that, the tree to get to Booney's face from Clay. amazing. I, I don't know how they did that shit. It was amazing. Um, okay. So I want to get right into it. But the one thing I want to say, you know, uh, we have this rock and roll and, you know, everybody who's with us on the other journey of theory, you know, we got our big mental health uh, episode coming up this week. We're excited. And then in a little while, probably sooner than later, we're about to bring in the old man. And I call him the old man because he's been an old man since he's 20 years old is uh, Dayton Cali, chief answer. Um, he's actually in the waiting room right now, but I'm going to make him wait for a minute. I actually, um, I actually, as you know, I just want to tell everybody I went and saw him at his little beautiful little abode last week. And we got you on. FaceTime. Yeah. We got you on to make sure that he knew what he was doing on his computer. He might be worse than me. I'm not sure. Yeah. But to see Callie, and we've both been vaccinated twice. We're outside. Yeah. Cracking a bottle of wine, knowing you were coming up. He laughed. laughed. I mean, come on, Rossi. Come on. 
Well, he's he's you he's know a legend. He's, he's like, a legend. He's the best. He um he's one of my favorite people on the planet. Um, he we're gonna go deep into a bunch of stuff. And I want to bring him right in because everybody knows it's very hard when you talk about Sons of Anarchy to when when we talk about our journeys on the show, we talk me and you. Yeah. We talk me and Dayton. Yeah. Like that that was those are the peeps. So I want to just bring him in and then we'll talk about the episode. I, just I because, couldn't agree more. Let's go. Right, bring him. Let's go. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Dayton, we're recording. <laughs> hit, hit your camera. We're hit recording. Camera. What? What? Bot- bottom. There it is. Oh! <laughs> there it is. Oh. Oh. How, are you, how are you doing? All right. All right. <laughs> look at the Callie, saxophone. Callie, what? look at you. Look at you, bro. I wanted your opinion. I got different hats. Yeah, I like this one. <laughs> Well, so far, I love the one that's on. Oh, yeah, I love that one, too. I love that one, too. This yeah. is my Australian fucking... Uh, I robbed this from uh, who? A kangaroo. Paul Paul, uh, Paul Hogan. Outback. Paul Hogan. Crocodile Dundee. Yeah. No, what's <laughs> I got the... Uh, Peter Weller. Fear the Walking Dead. Fear the Walking Dead. Oh, uh, Garrett. Not fucking Garrett. They... <laughs> <laughs> we know who you are. You said, I oh, I was oh like, you Garrett, wore that. Okay? You wore that on Fear of the Walking Dead. Got it. I've never seen the show, Dayton. I'm only concerned about Deadwood and Sons with you and John from Cincinnati. I love John from Cincinnati. Yeah, yeah. leave that one on, Dayton. Oh, Just that's the one. That's leave the that one on. That's the hat. There's one more. Oh. <laughs> There's one more. Ready? Wait a minute. Okay. Oh, Jesus <laughs> All right. This is my walk in the dark. Yeah, that looks like the this uh, Wes Anderson movie. You look like Steve Zuzu or whatever. It looks that like called. condoms yeah. are alive and yeah, well. You could rob yeah. something, but it's orange too, so they might see you coming. But that's all right. <laughs> and then there's this hat. I like that hat. How are you, brother? You look amazing. You look great. I You're do. Feeling good. That's a fucking lie. No, you do. You you never change. You always look the same. You've been a hundred years old for a hundred years. <laughs> There's all that shit in the background of my house. Oh, that's my saxophone. I know. You people were at, people are asking about that, Dayton. Are you still playing? Yeah. I still suck though, man. It takes you know <laughs> really. I let go for a lot of years. It was like almost 30 fucking years, you know, and it's just like that's a no, long time. But when you're when you're as good as you are, you you're live modest with, about live. that shit. You don't brag about it. I mean, before I saw you last week, you told me you were just finished putting the tenor one down. You played yeah. that for a long time. So, yeah. come on. Rossi and I remember those days of going to your beautiful back house there. Wake and up. Play and play. Wake up. He's, is, he's Coltrane, is Coltrane still the one? The man, yeah. He's, yeah. Always, he's like the church of God, John Coltrane. That's up in San Francisco. He, he's our, the one. He's a spiritual leader, that's for sure. Yeah, one of a kind. One of a cut now, now, and he I came actually, up on. What? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no he go. came up on the Duke Ellington, right? Not really. I mean, he was there. That Duke is older. Yeah, would it be older? Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah. You know. So he he played in. I don't know. I think yes, he did play in one of Duke's albums, but he was younger than. Uh, than Duke was, yeah. Duke, yeah, yeah. Charlie Parker was more uh, Duke. Uh, 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 you know. Duke's generation. Uh, so, you know, but there's a, there's a lot of good players, you know. I just read the whole story of Newport 56, and it was like, you know, the Duke stuff oh, and yeah. Coltrane. They revived, and, uh, revived them, really. The, yep. Paul Gonzalez, the fucking uh, yep. dinner player. Yep. He's got yep. like a. Oh, no shit. Minute, really? Yeah. Oh, he's got a 20 minute solo, man. Yep. It just wow. fucking kills. Wow. It kills. It goes like, because, you know, Duke was done. I yep. mean, you know, he's playing weddings and shit, you know, and mm-hmm. and uh, you know they he got invited to the, the, the to the Newport Festival and and he went on and they were they were doing okay, and then they played oh shit what was the song? Fuck. Anyway, Paul right. Gonzalez Paul Gonzalez had a um, a solo in, 
-hmm. And he just cut loose and went on and went on and went on. And, and that actually revived the whole fucking Duke Ellington band. It was then they were. Wow. 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 But it was Paul Gonzalez that did it. Uh, it's a phenomenal, it, phenomenal story. And then how does, uh, and I might say it wrong. I always get yelled at. It's Thelonious Monk. How does he? Uh, Thelonious. How, Thelonious. Thelonious. Yeah. Th. Yeah. Th. Yeah. Th. Th. Yeah. Th. yeah. Thelonious. How does he, what was he playing? A piano. I mean, he piano. played played the piano. He's a, you know, he's another one of a kind. You know, nobody plays like Monk. You know, yeah. shit. How did how did you get into it? Like that's something we talked about, but how how did it even happen? We were doing drugs. <laughs> what are those? We were we were hippies. We were doing fucking drugs. I swear to God, we were all sitting around. We just, I I kind of went through a period with my kid, and I it was. 14 of us living in one house. And so we were all doing acid and shit and we'd have to sit around, you know, my kids would be running around and fucking separating the seeds from the marijuana. And, Good for them. And, and it was really, I, I used to lose them. I said, where the fuck are my kids? They, <laughs> it was a huge house. Is this in New so, York, Dayton? And where you been? He said, we were up with Uncle Michael separating the seeds. Oh, he had them. You was know, this in New York, Dayton? Where was this? In, in Newark. In Newark. In Newark. So what was I saying? Oh, so anyway. Uh, um, the saxophone. We all, my uncle had a saxophone. Wow. You know, and everybody wow. said, uh, let's start a fucking band. Nobody played anything. <laughs> we, we just started a band. We all picked an instrument to play. And I said, well, I got a, I got a saxophone, so I'll play that. You know, I don't, I don't have to buy one. So then uh, everybody else picked a different fucking instrument and we started practicing. Nine months later, we were playing them out. Come on, that's amazing, bro. It was, a, it really was. It was. You and I, you and I, like I was saying this, like at the time, because I used to live right near you when I was in LA, I was down in, you know, a few miles away or whatever. And I would come up there and, and, and I was just telling Kim before we got on, like, when I think back as sons, because, you know, in, in the beginning, it was hard. A lot of people never understand that. Like when you first, when we first got off, it was like, uh, all right, you know, I was, there was a lot you wanted to leave behind. But the one thing that was always the greatest fucking thing for me, and I told you this when we were together last time, it's like you and I would hang out at your house and watch games and chill out. And sometimes we wouldn't even be talking. We'd just be hanging out, right? Yeah. Just be sitting there. I and mean, it was me, you, the bunny, little buddy. There was buddy. The buddy. You were big buddy and I was little buddy. Carol would be, you know, inside and we'd just be fucking hanging out, eating. And uh, it was all the time. Like we were always yeah. together, always yeah. for years. Yeah. That's when you used to think highly of me. I don't know. I, what well, yeah, happened. no, then I got to know you and I said, fucking. Yeah. And you grow up. Ross, <laughs> what yeah. grow what up. am I doing here? <laughs> no, you know what it's like, you know, when you're younger and you think like older people are wise or like they know things about life. Oh, and you're, oh man, maybe I'll learn something from them. And then you get around them and you go, this guy doesn't fucking know anything. <laughs> really? <laughs> I'm in the left behind generation. <laughs> you know, I, I was shitting my pants trying to figure out how the fuck am I going to fuck this up? Bro, but we <laughs> had some fucking times. I mean, I'm not going to get into no, it. Kim's not a good teacher. Yeah, push that button. <laughs> oh, no, get over there. He was over here the other day. Yeah. He's trying to teach me how to do this shit. But it Kim, was, you was, were over was, there. Was, Kim, was, you were over there the other day, and we all used to be there. We'd be in the pool, we'd all be hanging out. Everybody well, would be this there. Is, this yeah. is what would happen. At the beginning of Sons, it was you and Dayton all the time. Then I got into that thing. Emilio got into that thing. Perlman yeah. came over. We had some boys really coming over. And then yeah. those last two or three seasons, because it just became so fucking tense and hard to shoot and yeah. so violent. It would be me dragging my sorry ass to Dayton's backyard at 10 o'clock. We wouldn't say a fucking thing. We drink a bottle of half of wine and go, what just happened today? Yeah. What's going to happen? Remember those Dayton, those times? Yeah. Yeah. And so it was you were a really good meeting place in that backyard, bro. We, we loved it back there and we still do. It was the only house we hung out at. It was the yeah. center point. Yeah. There was no other person's yeah. house we hung I out at. God, I swear to God, I'd sit on my back porch, you know, and, and I look out in the backyard and I, I just imagine. I reminisce, actually. Yeah. 
those fucking wild fucking days. Charlie, yeah. you guys trying to surf on a fucking surfboard oh, in the pool. Oh my God, that was so funny. <laughs> I remember that. Nuts. Yeah. We would run across your lawn with the, yeah, the bodyboard and we would board. try to stand up. Nah, on that it. all got started. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I started that? Friday oh, fucking oh, yeah. On Friday night, I swear to God, you, you, you would go, there's a barbecue at Dayton's house tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> no, but and 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 it was so great because I would tell everybody that when we would shoot late. And yeah. it was so much fun because there would be all the like I'd pull up to your house and all the bikes would be outside. I was like, what are the neighbors thinking here? Oh, like they know he's an actor. Yeah. They have to know he's an actor. They know yeah. they, you know, they've seen Deadwood, they've seen other stuff he's been in. All the motorcycles they go, come here we ripping go. up. What is up with the bikes? Oh my God. So loud. So Emilio, loud. Emilio used to show up with his fucking kind of, uh, yeah. fucking noise maker. That beautiful ape hanger, gorgeous yeah. green bike of his. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And then they didn't realize, and when the show got big, you didn't realize that you pretty much had the entire cast of the show, plus other people, by the way, because other actors yeah. would come that you knew yeah. from the past would come over from your other shows. And we'd all be in the back, all be barbecuing, drinking, partying, you know, whatever. And there's neighbors on every side or whatever. And it was just, and again, I think that, and Dayton, you would know this better than me. And Kim, you know, I know you didn't do a lot of TV before this. Earlier in the time, earlier, like the first few seasons was way different than when it got to the later seasons. And I think that that just happens. Don't Don't you you think, think, Dayton? In what way? Meaning Meaning like maybe we didn't do it as much as we did in the beginning. No, yeah. The first four or five years was, was it, it just built up to more and more people were showing up, you know, more and more, you know, every Saturday, every Sunday, Saturday, all that, you know. And then, yeah, it got fucking weird, you know. It got weird. It got fucking weird, you know. Because the, and the, it was the tension, right? Yeah, yeah. It was like, uh, you know, Kurt was on a fucking kill fucking spree, so you yeah, didn't know yeah. who the fuck was going to get killed and who yeah. was going to live, and they had that shit, and he was very secretive about it, you know. And so it, it created fucking, no, I'm not saying it was his fault, he was secret, he wanted to keep a fucking secret for the show, but uh, it made tension among us, you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, who's going to fucking get killed, and who's going to get axed, and who's going to whatever, I mean. Boy, you know what, Dayton? You are so right. That sixth and seventh season, even though Opie was the beginning of it all with the leads, but that sixth and seventh yeah. season, man, there was so much secret secret stuff going going down. And we would get a script and we would read something in the script. And what does that mean then coming up? And Yeah. Oof. Actually, you skimmed it to see if you were fucking dead. That's it. That was <laughs> the main thing you did. Yeah, you skim it and see, oh, oh, oh well, better him than me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, uh, I would I would actually argue that it happened way before Opie. I would actually argue that oh, with the Taylor. Tail, the Taylor stuff, Taylor, yeah. Bill. That's what yeah, it all I began. Would, I would argue that it was basically like you were you were in fear of your job at all times. Yeah, and that that yeah. created tension. Right. Yeah. And and I think that 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 along with there were so many of us, and you know. Certain times, certain people had a lot more to do. And, you know, that's always a thing. And then on top of it, when you're when you're adding into the fact of fame, I mean, we're a bunch of character actors who are walking around and all of a sudden it was like, holy shit, this is we're going where we're going to the Middle East. We're going here. We're going there. We're we're going all over and every there's going to be thousands of people waiting. That was fucking with people in a way, too. Right. Well, the I was a little more famous than you, Theo. Right. <laughs> you still are. Right. You, you still, still are. are. What, are you kidding me? <laughs> nah. nah. You guys are. You guys are fucking doing good. You know. You guys are doing really good. You know. Well, you had just the come did, off. The show did a lot for all of us. The show did a lot. For sure all did. Of us. Yeah. I, I got Dead, Deadwood did, did a lot. lot. Deadwood did a lot. A lot of people. You know. And yeah. but but uh, sons in in the same kind of way. You know. It, it uh, got us out there. You know. Yeah. You know, I mean, we were doing we were doing good, good ratings, top ratings for cable and shit. Biggest, the biggest in, in cable. So, yeah. the, Dayton, I got to tell you, I mean, Go Theo ahead. and I, as I told you the other day, we're doing season season four now. Uh-huh. Where you started off in the trailer <sighs> and, and now you're coming out of the trailer in this third episode. 
And I got to tell you, bro, like, and I told you this the other day, you're, you're fucking amazing actor. Yeah. You're, you're just, you're uh, fucking amazing. Theo and I talk about the scenes the that you and, Ron, you and Ron have together. They're like two gunslingers that are just, it's so fun to watch. Now for me, I just realized as I'm taking my notes last night, Dayton, you're not even a cop anymore. You were there for season four, five, six, and seven. Not and as a not cop. even being a cop. That's how fucking important you were to the show. Yeah. I know. It, it, was, it was ended up being okay. I mean, there's always parts of the character you don't like and shit like, you know. I mean, I think back and I see a little bit and I think, you know, Unser was more of a cunt than I am. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I don't know what to say, but, you know, he... That, that was that was hard for me, you know. But that's what that's what acting is, Dayton. You I know, know that. I know that's that I, that was a difficult part of doing. For sure, for that, sure, got you. That, uh, well, you you you. I'll never forget because the one thing that you did, and I always tell you how fucking great you are, even though I give you shit constantly. But uh, you got to do you got to do comedy in this specific episode we just watched. You got to do you 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 and I did a bunch together. But mm -hmm. you were one of the few characters that was able to do comedy as well as deep yeah. drama, right? You were yeah. dealing with the cancer, yeah. you were dealing with the stuff with the with the sheriff stuff and all or whatever the uh, the the top cop. And then all of a sudden, you'd have all these little comedy things. Me and you with the cup of piss and the, you know all this stuff that we were doing. But what I felt, I'll never forget. You called me up one day, and you 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 were stressed. You were stressed. You remember this? <laughs> No, I don't know. You called like, me up and you go, uh, did you read the script? And I said, I, no, I didn't get to it yet. What's up? And you go, uh, yeah, read the episode. And I said, what is it? And you go, he, they got me crying in this fucking episode. And I go, <laughs> and I go all right, so whatever. That's cry. all it says. And you go, you go, I'm not fucking crying. And I go, well, hold on. Have you thought about anything yet? Like, do you even know what, you know, why was it? Yeah, I don't care. I'm not fucking crying. And I was like, <laughs> And I was like, my God, you read it once and you're all of it. And you just, it was something in a car. You were in a oh, car. He got all, he got all Newarked out. He got all jerseyed out. I'm not fucking he crying. He did I not want to mean. cry. <laughs> I, don't I, said, cried, I? I don't think I cried. Did I? Can I tell you what you did? <laughs> I don't I know, know which episode did. it was. A couple of times, but you were with Gemma just recently and you were in your trailer and you started to feel it and the emotions yeah. were coming out. And you put your fucking hand up, you covered up those tears, but there was yeah, something going on, it. bro. Yeah, you stop it. You can't show. You can't show. That's it. <laughs> you, can't show. That's it. <laughs> you know, you just can't do it. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I could. I, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just that I can't, you know. Okay, uh, I got a question for you. Yeah. Do you remember, because it was like 85 years ago, uh -huh. when you auditioned for Sons, you did audition, right? I don't know. Oh, yeah, I did. That's right. I so did. what do you remember about it? Anything? With Wendy? What do you remember? No. I uh, I, I knew Charlie Hayde, right? Wasn't he the fucking... Yeah, guy? Charlie Hayde yeah. was the producer. He was like a line producer or something. Yeah. And well, he directed it. Charlie Hayde? He did. did he oh, he no, did. He, he directed did. one episode the first That's season. The first yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I knew him from another sh one other gig I did with him, you know? And so I walked in the fucking room and, and it was like, you know, lined up there and shit. And, and I went, hey, Charlie, you know, he, hey, how you doing? Man? And he said something fucking stupid. And I went. <laughs> yeah, that would be him. <laughs> you know? And then uh, it was very uncomfortable. Oh. The, the audition was very uncomfortable. Wow. Um, and I left there thinking, I, I don't know, I could, I could have done a lot better. But Kurt saw Deadwood. He was a fan of Deadwood. Oh, and, God, yeah. You there know, you go. And so that helped me my way in, I guess. But I wasn't supposed to be there. I was only supposed to be there for a couple episodes. And, you know, so it's like Deadwood. I was supposed to be in, in Deadwood for, for three episodes, then right out of town, then come back when they shot Hick Hickok. But, you know, I heard one thing once and, and, and you just got to make it difficult for them to say no. Mm. You know what I mean? You just got to go in there and be so fucking good. How about that? They can't fucking deny you. How about that? 
you know, you just that's all you got to worry about. You know, it's, it's I got to kick ass in this shit and let them fucking let them throw me throw me inside if they want, but make it very difficult for them to say no. Well, I found I found that what they had in you in Unser was it that they figured out that you and Gemma go way back and there was always something there. And Gemma being the queen of this fucking show, some say the king of this show, she certainly was the queen. And that those relationships that we were finding out that we would find out about one was yeah. you and Gemma. Yeah. It was gold for the show. Yeah, I, I, I think I think she I think she had something to say. I think she, you know, liked me and. 100 percent, Dayton. You know, wanted me around. You know, it's it's like uh, I can. This is I shouldn't. I don't know if I could say this or not. And you if can it's say wrong, whatever you want. Well, if it's wrong, uh, edit it out. <laughs> I don't. I don't edit. We don't anything. edit it. Okay. In. But I'll. I'll tell you. I will. But go ahead. <laughs> when we shot Deadwood, like I said, I was only supposed to be there for a couple episodes. One of the producers came up to me and said, we're keeping you on the show because I was the only one who could get a certain character to act. There you go. You know, I, there you I, go. I brought it out of, of him. So they... But that's that. real. There's nothing wrong with saying that because that's that's a fact. I mean, that that happens. I When I worked with you, I'll be completely honest. When I worked with you, it was easy. What that means is like people have to understand and it's hard if you're not an actor, or you're not in the business. There's even it doesn't mean the scene's easy. It means that it's easy that that the person's coming to do their thing. You're coming to do your thing. That's what it is. And you're going to go. Yeah, it's yeah. not a big fucking deal. Right. You're not going to watch someone talk about how they're going to walk through a door for two hours, like, or they're going to not talk about easy. It's all easy. It's just easy. Right. And you and I, that was the greatest thing about working with you. Cause it was fucking easy, not just as a person, but as an actor, it was just easy. And yeah. certain people made it really fucking hard. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. producers, if, if the show gets big or if that person is big, if that person's the lead, and you, we all know that sometimes leads can be complicated, right? And you, and you can make it easier for everyone, including them. Yeah, including them, they keep you around. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, you know, it, it's, it's funny because I really, I, I never spoke with Kurt, and maybe once in the very beginning for two minutes. And then I, I never had a conversation with him. Wow. For eight fucking years. Or so, how, Seven. Yeah. Eight I mean, years yeah. total, like on and off, yeah. We never had a conversation, which was a good thing. You know what I mean? You don't want to have conversations because then, you know, you can get yourself fucking, talk yourself right into a murder. Yeah. <laughs> but on the flip side, did you talk to Milch all the time? Never. No. Never. Because he used to tell me to get the fuck away. Yep. <laughs> you were like a little dog. I, I would I would I would follow him. I hang around. And I would follow him. And so he's got this one fucking story. You know how the thoroughfare was all fucked up and everything. Well, I had a scene with with Tim, right? And and I Tim had Oliphant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had a question about it. You know, so we 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 did a rehearsal and it, of some other scene. So I, I walked up and we go. He was going down the thoroughfare at a pretty good pace. So I walked up to him next to him. And I say, well, you know, I was thinking. I'm you know I'm. You're Take clipping. A shuffle steps, huh? You're What'd clipping you along. Yeah, you're, yeah, yeah, go ahead. But so we were going down, I'm sidestepping horse shit and everything. And, <laughs> and I said, well, this, what do you want me to do here? He goes, you know, do that fucking thing where you aggravate me all the time. Just like that. <laughs> do it just like fucking that. I went, oh, okay. I could do that. You know, <laughs> that was his direction. And getting back to, and getting started, Theo, getting back to what Theo said too, with you and me, Dayton. And I, and, I, and I know that you'll remember this. There, there was stuff that we would do. I'm not sure Unser ever really liked Tig. Like, I don't no. think he actually really did like Tig. But because Dayton and Kim got along so well, I would rub your head like a bowling ball. I would slap you in the ass. And you, pure as Unser, would go, you motherfucker. But we, it was easy for you and me. 
because we knew each other so well. There was no rehearsal of like Theo said, walking through the door or no, no, where, where are we standing? Where are we going? Let's go. And we played and we played. No, it Fuck was, it was it, fun. It was, yeah, it was, uh, it was good. It but was it's good. also, I mean, and, and Dayton, not to, you know, take up a ton with this, but you understand like, I mean, we could talk for days about the stuff that was off camera because, you know, we all went away. We went to the Middle East. You guys went to Guam and all these yep. other places. And but like. It's so unique, right? Like when you reminisce about it and think about it, wasn't it just like like almost like this? Great it's like point. a dream state when you kind of right. go back to it, like as and, and good and bad. It's not saying that it was all good. People people want to hear that it was all the greatest thing in the world. And that's not necessarily true. But overall, it was fucking amazing when you think about it. Uh, no, yeah, it was. It was funny though, man. I, I mean, I, I, you guys get, gave the name. I don't know who came up with Unser Island. Yeah, which, yeah. you know what I mean. Was I was always yeah, we did. You got them right. We did <laughs> my scenes with you know one or two people, and and I'd leave, and you guys were stuck there all fucking week, all day. You know? Yeah. Day you were there night. two days a week. You'd come in, you'd come in with your fucking little khakis on and you yeah. you, you tucked in, you'd come in, you'd eat. You'd, no, make everybody, up, you were like the mayor. Anymore. Everybody, oh, oh there's date, and everybody have a laugh. Everybody, and then you're gone. You're home by six yeah. o'clock watching the game. Yeah. All right. Call them if I, I call them. Are they still working? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but that's what that's what makes those scenes like the scene when you were at the table and you put your arm up, like when you went to vote, makes them so, so funny, funny because you were an outsider, but you were there. Like when you would come into the bar and you'd like take a shot with the sun, it was like you were there. Bottom shelf. Bottom and shelf. It, Bottom shelf. Oh, and it was so funny because it, it mimicked. I gave him that line, you know. Oh, you did? did? You? We just yeah, reviewed it. that a few weeks ago. That's oh, so great. Yeah. yeah, you don't want no, no, no top shelf, no, 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 no. bottom shelf. <laughs> that's <laughs> so Look at the shit down there. <laughs> but that's what made it so like good because you would you also got and and I was so fucking jealous of it sometimes you got to like do like real scenes like in from the beginning you were doing like longer one on one yeah. scenes yeah where everybody else was in like these group scenes with one line here one line there one line here you would the have jackals. like yeah. real yeah. scenes yeah with yeah. you and Jim are in the church, or you and Je you and Clay in the in the office, you and you install, you and like you would have, and that's why I think that what resonates in those one on ones is like still my favorite line in the entire show is when you go to hand to the joint. You really should. <laughs> you really should. We talked about that. Didn't lines we, ever. Dayton. we talked about that the other day when I that's, saw you. One of my favorite lines ever. <laughs> it was. It was fun. All right. Well, listen, we could keep you on for 14 days. And guess what? We're getting you back. And I I freaking love you, bro. I love you, brother. I'll, I'll see you soon. Yeah, I miss you, man, I miss you a lot, bro. All of you. It's like, you know, I, I watched a little bit of the show last night. We couldn't. It took me an hour to figure out how to get a <laughs> DVD on there. You know but what we should do? We should really try to do like before like you know once this whole thing's over and everybody's vaccinated everybody's you know where they are and whatever if like we should try to at least get a bunch of us back to the fucking pool like everybody yeah, go man. to the backyard yeah, and have like a big ass barbecue just oh, we're gonna no we're gonna and leave your carol's fucking baggage day. carol's um, out the other day the pool looks amazing nothing's changed he's got another big setup right by the house now the dog's get, there now there's a dog I mean, now yeah oh, i picked so cool. her up for you Sophie. Dayton, Dayton, you know, I told this story the other day on the uh, on the show. I was in your backyard once. It was one of those hot summers. I had come up. I had I'd ridden up there and, and, uh, and me and you were sitting by the pool and you were so excited. You looked at me and you go, what do you think about the parrot? And I go, what? And you go, what do you think about the parrot? I go, you got a parrot? And you go, look. And it was one of your light up ones, those fucking neon <laughs> light parrots. And I went and I went. It's cool. And you go, you like the parrot, right? So it's fine, right? <laughs> then I would go over there. Every time I go over there, it'd be like a different parrot structure. Yeah. Like, what the fuck oh, is yeah. going on with these parrots? I love neon, man. He <laughs> loves neon shit, man. He does. Fucking like parrot just having a martini. That goes right back to your you saxophone know? days, brother, man. Oh, yeah. 
Neon everywhere. It's, it's a fucking parrot having a martini. It's a fucking <laughs> neon light. It's like a three foot structure or whatever it is. You got yeah. it from somewhere. And it's yeah. a fucking parrot having a martini. And it made you happier than anything I've ever seen. It did. I swear to God, I would look at that and just cheer up. <laughs> I don't know why. You know, I still got the motherfucker. <laughs> that and the and that and the bunny, that and Buddy the bunny would come out, and that motherfucker would just be running around, and uh, and we would have a blast. Just doing what he wants, you know. Just doing what he wants. Right, hey, by buddy. the way, I still have. Uh, do you remember when my dog ate your DVD box set? Of I told, yeah, I thought about that last night. I swear to God, I said, you know what? I'm sitting there watching. I, I looked down and there's a box. And I said, there's one fucking DVD missing. You bet. It's in Benji's belly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that thing is gone. I still have the eating box. <laughs> I'm going to send you the fucking eating box. I have it. I'm going to send it to you. I want to remember. No, I just want to remember. It I'm going gonna, gonna to send to you. So listen, I love you to you death. Dayton. I really do. You know how uh, to sign out, wait, Dayton. Wait, Can you me, do it? Can you figure it out? What did you say, Bo? Do you know how to sign out now? Do you know how to do it? Pull the plug on something, man. That's what you <laughs> just pull everything out. Now, wait, are you, you're, you're leaving town? You're going... Kim. Yeah, it's on the Kim. down low, but yeah, I'm going. I'm going to the East Coast for about four months, but we'll oh, let everybody really? know. You know, when, four fucking when the... months. Yeah, so oh. I'm going to see you before I go for sure. You know when, that. I, they want me to go to uh, uh, Belgrade. Bel no, you wanted to go to Serbia, right? Serbia. Yeah. There He's no been offered a big picture there, Theo. Go. That's what I said. July. You should go, those Dayton. People, as long as things like, are okay. those people, like those people, like are always killing, kidnapping. Ain't that fucking? You're not gonna get kidnapped, Dayton. Believe me, nobody. They wants all to know you over there. there. They, they love all you. know you. They all know you. One, they don't want to kidnap you, and if they did kidnap you, they'd give you right back after yeah. about five minutes. <laughs> so don't worry about it. Where are you going? Me? I'm I'm hey. in Austin, and then I'm coming to L.A. soon. Yeah. What? Like in a couple of weeks. All right. You yeah, know, fucking stop and you're too busy. We'll go to the no. Restaurant. After I'm, I'll, I'll be full. You know, I'll, he's, I'll, he's I'll vaccinated come up. Himself now. I'm Coming fully up. vaccinated up, and I'll come over and uh, you know, we'll uh, we'll do our thing. We'll stare at the parrot together. All right, All right. let's let's do this review today. here. Get out of here. Love, love you, Dayton. Love you, buddy. This fucking thing off. Just you know how to do you. it. Just shut the fucking. Just, just go, go to the red button. Red button on the. It's it's you see end. Motherfucker, you see end over there? Get the mouse going. And oh, look at this. Look at I, this. All right. I'll get up. <laughs> look at this. What the fuck? It's the it's on the bottom right corner of your screen. It says end. The bottom the mouse right. on the screen, so the shit comes up. There you oh, go. It says doesn't say fucking end. It says leave. Yeah, go leave. Go leave. Go leave left. <laughs> leave, leave meeting. <laughs> Let's give it up to Dane Cali. Give it up. Give, give it up, up to Dane Cali. Dane Cali. God, there's really no one like him. Um, all right. Let's listen, go. man, we're going right in. Let's go. What a fucking episode. What a fucking um, episode. By the way, you and I talked prior. Oh, this fucking episode is great. Great. Um, just great. Here we go. Let's go. It's just so good. So Jackson Clay are talking the vote. Um, and this is right where I noticed that the camera moves right off the bat. I was like, holy shit, he's going around this room like the camera's like a person. If you watch, if you watch this episode before this, watch the way that camera's moving with Clay. As Clay's moving, the camera's moving with him. Yeah. And it's kind of like on the side of him and it's all over here. And you feel like you're in the room with Jackson yep. Clay. Yeah. Um, there is some heavy shit going on under, this is just a regular morning and it feels like you're, it feels like you're a, a voyeur in a breakfast scene. Yeah. But yet, Clay kind of fucking has that thing that he's going to go talk to Tara. Yep. And there's a lot of underlying shit going on. In there. Well, and I found out that Kozik was an ex-junkie. I didn't know that. They say that right there. In I didn't scene. know that either. Kozik was, was an ex-junkie. I go, wow, did we even play that up? I mean, I don't even remember if we did Never. Not. Never played so. that. Found that out. And, and, and you, would think, Jack you would think Tig would know that and say that. Exactly. No, exactly. Weird. But there was no comment by me or anybody. He just was, he threw it out there. He's an ex-junkie and we all knew that. Okay, fine. But we never touched on it. We never talked about it. But isn't that something again that you think like when, like the thing about Juice being a crystal meth head at one point, like these are things that like, or an addict, like they never, 
it's like they get written, they come up for a moment and then they go away. They never get talked about again. Yeah, it's so funny. That's weird, right? So he gives her, Clay gives her a look at the end when he's leaving, like basically like, I know and be careful. Yeah. Right? You're talking about the Clay and Tara stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I just said great acting on two fronts with Clay and Tara. I mean, they're just, you know, Clay is kind of bullshitting knowing that Tara has these ideas about what she might've read in a JT manuscript. Like yeah. there's all, you know, there's, it's called great acting and then great acting. There's yeah. Ron and Maggie, great actors. Then Clay's got to act in the scene. It's it was really great. fun to watch. Which by the way, is like a double layer of acting. Double when, layer, bro. And you know, you know that you've been there, right? When you're an actor sure have. in a scene. So Theo's playing juice. Yeah. But then Juice is pretending to be someone no, else. It's, it's like so acting much fun. on acting. It's so fun to do. So Tension. Fun. It was great. So then we go to Happy. I love that scene because I, I'm, I'm fucking obsessed when the club acts like a club. Like, I, yeah. I don't know. I, I get like, it, it makes me fucking giddy when I see like, it sounds stupid, but like, here's Happy yelling at Miles because he's a prospect. Like, and I'm like, and, and, he's, and he's messy shit. in the house. Clean and, the fucking house, you little shit. And we add a fucking layer, layer. to Happy's character yeah. that he has OCD, that he I've likes everything I've never seen clean. that before. Beautiful to see. Loved it. That is the shit that you get. You, it's like a bonus game. It's like, it's like fucking pressure luck or, you know, a, a, a game it, that's on the middle of the day. You're getting bonus round. You get to find out. Yeah, here man. he is yelling at a prospect. Oh, and you just found out he has OCD and likes everything clean. I and, love that shit. And I love it. And then you get Kozik. Dumbass. Typical gorilla. Dumbass. Strongest idiot. Like unbelievable dumbass. And he says, me and you, LeBron. Yeah. Now, how do we how do we get away with stuff in 2011 compared to today, depending on Never what happened. it's about and blah, blah, blah. But the writing was so, and then, you know, and then he gets called some lemon head or something yep. by, the, by, the, by the guys. On the you fence. know what that's from? You don't know what lemon head's from? No. So Lemonhead is a is a callback to the Shield. His character's uh, name was Lem. Uh, no, it was Lem. not. Yeah. So his character's name was Lem, uh, and they all called him Lemonhead sometimes when they would fuck with him. Well, there you so, go, bro. Yeah. So it's a it's a callback for all a the callback. Shield fans. What they might call an Easter egg. So here we go. Now we, we, we he's he's going to be a dumbass. You know that something bad's going to happen because they they come in tight on that truck, and you're like, fuck. Why is he taking the bait? Right. Yeah. So we cut to Tig and everybody building. We're all we're con we're Look doing contract. At my happy little elves. Theo, I remember that entire day. The entire fucking day. I if you looked closely, I had earplugs in because guys, it's like you shooting when you shouldn't have shot yeah, in that one yeah. episode. These yeah. guys would turn a saw on or turn a hammer on. You're not supposed. So I kept these freaking earplugs in the whole time because you know my ears are fucked. Yeah. So fun. I didn't know that Tommy had the sh the shitters. I forgot well, about. No. That. So I don't. I unlike you, I remember the location because I was there yeah. all the time, but I don't remember the scene, and yeah, I don't remember. I do. Here's here's what struck me is your mustache is coming back in. It's a half stash. I just wrote. <laughs> it's a half stash. No. Oh yeah. Here it goes. Also noticed I'm growing back that upper stash. <laughs> <laughs> it's a half stash. I was like, it's why didn't they paint it in a little? It's like a half stash. <laughs> I thought that was so cool. I was like, holy shit! They caught him right in the middle of growing up, growing in his mustache. Right, man. So that. then he comes in because apparently Chibs had bad food. Now there's a couple of things that you notice about this scene for me as a son's now a son's a giant son's fan. We're starting this. to learn. First of all, Ryan is at his full Opie. I mean, he, the hair, yeah. his muscle, like he's Opie. He looks he's like big. Mufasa. Big. Like he is fucking he's Lion not, King. He's the not, Lion King. He's like a deity. He's a God. He's yeah. So, he's a God. Somewhere. He's back in Greece now. There's Odin. Wrong. He is yeah. Odin. He's fucking literally yeah. coming out and it's Four. like the long hair, the muscles, the this, the that. Yeah. He's, that's Ryan in, in, in Opie's fullest form. Yep. Chibs comes out all fucked up. If you look at Chibs, this is something Tommy was doing as the seasons got later. He started wearing like designer clothes. He's wearing like, yeah, a leather, he did. He looks really good. 
a leather <laughs> button down shirt. He's looking like Jimi Hendrix. He's coming in all and his stomach. And then there's juice. <laughs> this is when we start learning about clear passages and the colonic stuff. And he's so happy when he talks about it. Yes. Anytime. I just got, so, I got, I got so warm when I saw that fucking scene. Oh, it's fucking this great. Is so fucking funny. It's so great. And, and again, that clear passage thing was just, and I can't wait to get into that. So you're growing the, the colonic stuff. Now we go back to Kozik. He's balling. First of all, Kozik can play. Kozik's an athlete. Uh, and, then, and one, and sorry, one more thing. You got to remember that, that clay again says, Tig, you're not coming with me. Yeah, you're not coming. Again. You're standing right here. And everyone looks at me again, Peter Weller. He made sure that they, the camera was on me just for that ending shot. Yep. And then they showed Bobby, you, Ch uh, Charlie. Everyone looked at Tig for his reactions like, fuck me. I'm not going with you again. Anyway, keep yeah. going now. And, 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 go. and that'll come back later. That'll but come you, back. you know, that swings around. You, you're really having that tough time with Clay. I mean, and, oh. and by the way, they're spotlighting it. They are. They're spotlighting the, the separation of you two. Yep. Which I think says more about Clay than it does about Tig. See, they're trying to make it that it's about Tig's emotion, but it says how Clay is distancing himself from anyone that can judge him. Yep. And he knows he has my vote. He doesn't have yeah. Bobby's vote. So he needs Bobby to go with him so he can have the big talk with Bobby. He needs this drug deal to pass. He knows Tig's going to put his hand up and go, yay, I'm in. Yeah. Not, not Bobby necessarily. So that's why he's really taking Bobby. But, but you know what's so interesting? And I always think about this. Yeah, while he always has Tig and what makes for good writing and good storytelling. Yeah, Clay assumes I got Tig no matter what. I don't have to nurture him. I don't have to give him anything. I don't have to do anything for him because I'll always have him. But if you if you start to see Tig's reaction, it's like, does he always have them? Oh, good point. Good point. You know uh, what I mean? Is he is he the always onion gonna... is starting to be peeled off in this season? This fucking season is such a good season. My God, such a good season. So right. Kozik's Kozik, balling. How could um, you, you fucking idiot? Gets rocked by the thing in the back Rock. of the head. He loses the truck. Kenny can play basketball for real. Kenny can do anything. He's an amazing for athlete. For real, man. He's an yeah. athlete, that guy. Yeah, he's tough as the you toughest person. You know, I, I, I could actually beat him up on skates, though. Let's, let's, let's. Oh, yeah. Let's Probably hockey, you can take him. Hockey, but, I'll take him out. Otherwise, no, I'm running for the hill. Don't let him get ahead of steam. He'll put you right through the glass. <laughs> I've um, told this a million times in an alley. I'm taking Kenny. No, oh, oh, Kenny Johnson's not a, coming with not me. A, he's the first person I take to a fight. Yeah. Over, over for, pretty much anybody. Honestly, uh, God. Unless, unless it's like some of the UFC guys I know, like, you know, like fucking John Jones or Uriah well, Faber no, or somebody that's like a different thing besides yeah. professional mixed martial artists that we're friends with. I'm taking, he will go through a tank. I'm taking Ken. Yeah. Yeah. He's no, he's, he's an, he's an animal. So now here we go. Potter and Roosevelt meeting. This is when we realize and we find out about the juice is our now connection. We start to see about the Juan family. Carlos. Too. They say your whole name. Yep. Ortiz. Theo, let me tell you something. When I saw this last night to review, I had not seen this episode, but I remembered the scenes in it because I realized what a great show it was. Yeah. Buddy, what did you feel when they said your name as, a, as an audience member? Like, what the fuck? Here we go, little brother. So this was wild for me. Um, and we'll probably talk about this on our other show theory. This was a moment in my life before this season started that I changed everything. I changed everything about myself, meaning that mean? I changed, I changed the way I was you living. Look, everything, not, not just live? my look. I changed the way I was living my life. Like everything changed about me, Theo. Yeah, I yeah. was, I was shedding the skin of an old version of me and I was becoming a new version of me, which we all do. I think you were actually. In every way. And it's not that the old version was bad of me. It was different. And I needed to become different. Right. Kurt was instrumental in that shedding of that skin in a personal sense. Kurt basically and I spent a lot of that off season together. Never talked about sons ever. When he called us in for that meeting, which he did between seasons, he told me what was going to happen. Now, here's what's funny. 
Kurt doesn't know about me, doesn't know about my family, doesn't know about my ethnicities, doesn't know about anything. My cultural history doesn't know anything. He just knows me. And he told me, but he kind of told me loosely. So I was learning as I read the scripts as well. I knew that what he said, which was really important to me, was we're going to try something out, see how it works. Now, what people don't realize what's different from the way you and I filmed today to the way we filmed back then is we would be filming episode six, but episode one would be on the air. We were kind of right on the edge of still breaking story as they would can see how things are playing out. And I knew that this was my shot. I just knew it. I knew, you know, you know. So um, I was fucking hyped, but I didn't know. I didn't. I also was, to be completely honest, and I don't think I ever said this. I was also nervous that this was going to be the end for me. Sure. Like, like, oh, this is going to be good, but I might get like a few episodes and then I'm going to die. And then you're going to be whack. That's right. And, and, and that's the, like, the, no good deed goes unpunished. Like, I'm going to get a great arc, but I'm going to be gone. Yep. And I was like, fuck, would I, do I want the great arc and then be gone? Or do I want to lay under the radar and be there forever? I, I, I want it all. I want but it all. if someone said to me, I'm just going to get paid, but be unhappy, please write me an arc and let me move mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Write me the biggest arc that people will never forget because of your talent or mine, mm -hmm. and I'm moving on. But if you give me some bones to throw, I want it all. But but to, to be completely honest, and this sounds nuts, I, I didn't know maybe if I even had the, I don't know if I had the confidence at that moment in myself. Isn't because so I had, beautifully to say, Rossi? Honestly. I don't think I did because I, great, I, I, I great learned honesty. it. Honesty. You know, I'll be honest, because I was a guest star actor who had done 40, 50 guest stars where I, I did some heavy shit on all these TV shows and these small movies. I bet you did. But now it was on this grand scale and I'm going to have to do it, do it. And, and um, I was like, can I do this? And what happens, confidence, I believe confidence comes from doing things uh, over and over and over and you start to learn you you start to learn it you become a 10,000 hours the master so I was learning as I go but I started having these like aha moments point is when that scene came on and I read that I was like oh fuck now I knew remember I knew from the Russian wedding in season in episode one when he came in on me and said this killing is gonna affect juice I need to see it on your face and I was like why and they were like just Fucking do it. But they didn't tell me anything. Yeah. And they were setting something up, which was amazing because they hadn't set up anything the first three seasons. Like you always were set up from the beginning with yep. Donna. Yeah. I, I had now gotten the shot. So I was super excited. So here, just let me say again, Potter is a weird dude, right? He's just like this weird dude. Roosevelt's working with him. Um, now Jackson, everyone's heading out and you've had enough. You say, I'm going with you. I'm not going to fucking do this shit with bullets. I'm going. Yeah. That's kind of the first moment where we see him maybe disobey Clay. Right? I go like this. I go like, first of all, did Tommy have an issue with this storyline, with his inner, inner, inner stuff? Do you remember? Because you had a lot of stuff with Tommy. Did he no. have a little issue? He was good with it. No, he, he was good. I don't think that he... Because it came out of nowhere for me, but it was beautiful for you and him to have these two, three scenes together. But did he no, have we loved working together. Him yeah. and I, him and I loved being, I, I, this sounds weird. We loved being alone together in scenes. No, it's like me and Kozik swinging on, on, on the swing set. Just the two of us. You guys are swinging together. Okay. That's great. But when, 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 um, when I say, fuck that, fuck that shit, Jax, I'm going. And he goes, okay, Tiggy. That was an, that was an ad lib. I mean, that was never there. Was like, okay, Tiggy, here we go. Mm. Like, I fucking walked out of there. I'm not going to be stuck here. I'm out. So it was good. Good day. And that's a disrespectful moment to Clay. Fuck yeah. Because you know he's going to find out. Fuck yeah. So I love that. And then, and now we get to Bobby and Clay. And this is, again, Ugh. man, I got this thing with Bobby's character where there are moments when I'm watching it and go, fuck, they could have did so much more with this character. And this was one of those moments. 
where he has such a gravitas, that character, right? And the way Boone played him and he really does have Clay's number. Like he has him, like he, he, you know, he, and Clay's trying to bait him with the gavel. Like you're going to be the president. Well, wow. I just got, he's sneaking around. There's so much sneaking around. Bobby's being dead fucking honest and yeah. Clay's just sneaking around. And let's just remember this, that Bobby Munson was not a first nine, but close. Very like close. He was right there. Right like first 20. He the might be first right, 20. Probably the first 15. He was yeah. right there. So him and fucking Clay, I mean, I'm the guns. Bobby's the brains. He he just he tells Clay everything he sometimes does not want to hear. And because- he is the reaper. Like he's the guy. 100 like percent He's the biker. He's the one. He's tradition, right? He's a traditionalist. He believes in the rules. He believes in what they started. He believes in whatever John Teller came back from Vietnam promoting. He believes in that community. Yeah. And nobody's going to stop him. So when he Great sees scene. things going outside of that community. Great scene. Camera work is unbelievable. Fucking Zipper, unbelievable. It's almost like it was on a drone. They had wires. This camera just whip around. I'm on a tree to catch Bobby's face. Peter did an amazing job. And, and Regina. Then, and then Clay tells him about Jax. Yes. Yes, he does. Honesty. And Regina Carrado wrote this episode. Oh, with oh Lizzie. Love her. What a, I mean, come on. Regina, she killed this stuff. She was killed so her. good. Regina's one of the best writers on the planet. And then Liz Seagal. Is Liz Seagal. Katie's they teamed sister. it up beautifully on this episode. So good. All right, let's go. So Gemma and, Unser, Gemma and Unser in church. I got to tell you, this come is on. Kind of, I mean, come on. This come whole on. fucking Unser, sequence. Unser goes, trying to remember how to do this. Yeah. Gemma goes, put the flame to the wick. I mm-hmm. mean. <laughs> but then he, when she uses him as the spotter. Yeah. Can't it do sounds so stupid. There's little things throughout this scene. Unser spots Roosevelt. He goes to see him. Oh, yeah. Margaret. No. And there's a fertility problem yeah. with the gal. Yeah. So, His again, gal. that's going to come later. That's, that's a crumb. Come later. That's a crumb. That's, that's coming a crumb. later. Crumb. It's a, it's a crumb, bed. Be- yeah. Coming later. So, but then Margaret walks in. She's got the textbook backwards. McNally. McNally's the fucking greatest. I want to get her on the show. She's um, coming. I really got to get her on the show. So he misses it to watch their nonverbal looks after McNally, Margaret leaves. And, and I just got to say that I'm still there today trying to get the line out of the cover of that book that McNally slash Margaret did in one take. I would still be there. I could never, ever. So then she splits. It's nice to see that they're kind of, anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So again, you can't, can't do anything right. Completely no. Broken. And and again, their dynamic, this is sun's at its best. Sun's at its best is when there's lightness in the chaos. Yeah. Great. That sun's at its best. Great. And, and, great and you got to realize we're probably just about halfway into this episode, maybe a little less. And we've had a lot of light moments Yeah. and, and, and again, with heavy undertones. And that to me is sun's at its best. You don't, you're not watching it feeling horrible at yourself. Your escapism is you're going to laugh and you're also going to be like on the edge of your seat. And that's what this show did so great well. Great episode. This yeah. is a great episode. So here we go to these flesh eating ants. Um, yeah. After the title of this entire episode, keep going. The Russian. It's, the, dude. it's a Russian dude, right? Well, it's the guy who. It's the uh, guy. Rome, yeah. It's the guy from last episode. Yeah. yeah. With all the bullets and the issue and Jack yep. beat up and all that shit. Yep. Yeah. So he nice CGI, right, bro? Holy fuck, man. Didn't they didn't they nail that? Nailed it. Nailed it. And the and, and the guy playing the Russian nailed it. Like he had his nailed eyes it with closed. the spit and like looking all fucked up. And he was amazing. And and then again, Clay uh, this, you know, unnecessary, maybe. Um, Clay hears him and goes, Is he listening? Like, and then decides to kill him. And, yes. and I love that. Bobby, again, the spiritual in touch with nature, in touch yeah. with the, the spirit world. And, you know, and Clay doesn't, it, again, we're adding to Clay going full Darth Vader at this point. He wants out. He wants to retire with money in his pocket. Doesn't care. And he's the bad guy. Clay, yep. Clay is now being set up as the bad guy. He's Here wearing we are. the black like, hat. 
He's wearing the black hat a lot, man. A hundred percent. And I think that we danced around it the first three seasons. I think that's right, bro. I think that's right. Even we did, even, we did, we did a dance because we had stall. We did a dance because we had yes, freaking Adam yes, Arkin. We had a dance yes. because we had so many other problems. Well, guess what? We're all out of prison now. We're all home now. Uh, uh, um, you know, everyone's, you know, there's no real bad guy. There's no real bad guy. You know who the real bad guy is? We're going to pass it to Clay right now. That's we're gonna, right. We're, we're going we're gonna to give him the black hat for a while and see where this goes. That's right. So think juices, you just, juices, you just juices. said something that's so fucking great when you think about this show. The first three seasons, we had definitive bad guys. Correct. This season, even episode one, there's no definitive bad guy. You think it's Roosevelt. You yep. think it's Potter. You yep. go, and, and you go, but wait, they're, they're law enforcement. They're just trying to do their best. Yeah. And even Clay has jokes about when he was in prison with Juice and, you know, and all this. So you kind of still like Clay. They laid, they laid out Clay beautifully, smoking the cigar at the wedding, being home with Gemma. Even though Tara's onto something, we'll fix that. Not anymore. Not in this episode. From here on out. Yeah, baby. Clay is the motherfucking bad guy from here right. on out. And this, to me, is the episode that starts his arc as the true bad guy. And to be completely honest, and I'll never put words in Ron's mouth, I think maybe this is where part of the problem began. Because I don't know if he wanted to be the bad guy. What I do know, and we'll get Pearl on, he'll, you know, he's, he's the president, man. He'll, he'll, he, he can't wait to come on. Right. But he always told me that, and he saw the shift happening in this season. And yeah. that was, there ain't no more love affairs with Tig. There ain't no more love affairs with, because he's getting out and he's being it this way. And we're not going to get into it now because we don't want to do spoilers. But wait to see what happens, not only with you, but with Gemma and Clay, with mm. Tig and Clay. Near the end of this, this season, I remember some of this shit. It's going down in the worst possible way for the club. And it starts in this episode, too. I mean, it, it starts with him and Gemma in this episode. So, okay. So, Jax comes in red hot on Kozik. Everybody's screaming. I love that scene. You know why? Because it wasn't Jax going after me. Jax was going after <laughs> fucking Johnson. He's going after Kozik. And I remember that day going, thank God I don't have to fight anybody. This is going to be... I'm going to hold Jax back. Yeah, Ryan helped... He yeah, go ahead. We said this, the classic sun scenes, the punk music hits, the fucking, <laughs> you know. And again, now you really want to get a feel for Weller's camera work. Here it is, right? He's so moving with the bike. You're, the camera's on so the bike good. at one point. Yeah, right. Did you see that, Rossi? Amazing. So good. So good. The camera's on the bike for the first time on this show. First time ever. So again, we're, we're in, right? We're going. Great day um, of riding I got. Like we zipped around. We were getting better with the camera work. Like you just said, that was a great day on second unit. And then, and then, you know, we had the big fight. It was a great day of and filming. Kenny, and Kenny Johnson is such, I love him. He's such a clown. He, so much you love, see bro. when he takes his cut off, he hands it and he pulls and ties his fate. Like he literally ties yeah. his hood on. Yeah. He yeah. looks like a buffoon. He's yeah. so funny. He's so funny. And he zips off on his bike. Obviously. I got I, this. I got this. Because he has him. to make up for what he did. We just let him in the club. You didn't even want him in the club. No, you voted yourself in, huh, you big dink? I knew you would. That was a fun moment for me back in episode one. Yeah. One. Keep going. So Cozy goes and shoots out the windows. Yeah. And this, again, sun's at its best. When we're, when we're combining all the elements, the comedy, the drama, the action, we're combining them all in this episode. Plus, <laughs> Charlie comes up and goes, license and registration, please. Yeah, it's fucking Come on. great. From serious to funny. I love so, it. Um, Bobby and Clay. Clay yeah. is pissing off the gods. He doesn't care. Um, this is what it is. We go and that back. guy who played Charlie, he who married them yeah. on, the, on the on the reservation. Yeah, the Wahiwa. Wahiwa. Wahiba, uh, yeah. yeah. He was so good in this episode. So good. He so was good, so, so strong calm. and so calm. Native American and calm. calm. He needed to suffer more of this Russian, like just spiritual. So good, that actor. So, so good. good. Really good. I, I actually would like to see what he's up to. He's really good. He's very calm. He's very like just taking it in. And I don't think he believes Clay. I don't. We'll see what happens. He doesn't. He but, doesn't. you know, that's the way it goes. You know, Sons had a lot of ties to indigenous people and like indigenous land because didn't you and Half Sack do the mushrooms back then too? Oh, yeah. At a, 
Oh yeah. And Nick, was that a bullet pressing thing yeah. as well? Yeah. That's that's the first time we see that, where we're going to get these bullets from. It's the first wow. time we go there. That was way back season 1. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh no, it wasn't season 1. 2? It was season 2. Wow. Yeah. Because so there's always been a connection. It was after the Donna death that Tig yes. is losing his way and he takes those mushrooms and then I start crying with the doll yes. because of my, my remorse for Donna. Half sacks in that goddamn shit just like trying to get his nut to grow back it was so high. Anyway, that was that's right. That's where we were. So um, Opie's looking like full Lion King at this point. We're back to the crew. Um, it's truly like he, he just looks amazing. He's a straight up action figure. <laughs> so we go to Chibs and Juice coming out of clear passages. Um, I had so much fucking fun doing this. We, it was one of those scenes where we had like one take. I, rem- I, I recommend the green tea and the mint. Rossi, I replayed it. I replayed it, it twice. We had so much I, fun. I forgot how much fun when the comedy was so good it yeah. was for the show. Yeah. The show. Yeah, there's no, there no trying. It's just you were a punk ass club member. Yeah, such humor. And you know what, bro? You were growing up in front of our very eyes as Juice. This was stuff oh, that you were starting to grow yeah. up, man. Yeah, and he looks different. Juice looks different. Yeah, he really he looks different. He acts different. He's more confident. He's more cocky. Yeah, more you and Tommy were so good together. Yeah, and and again, me and Tommy go through the ringer for the next couple of seasons, but we. We just had so much fun doing it because when you really think about what works with sons is polar opposite characters, like people who are so opposite, you know, that, that that together in a scene, it's like, you know, it's unser juice, right? It's, it's Tig Venus. It's like when they're, when they're so opposite that that's what makes really good chemistry work. Some some spice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and chibs and juice are amazing. So different. So uh, Tara and Margaret scene. Um, Tell us about Gemma snooping around. Don't you know? This is the first time we're finding out Tara wants to move. Yeah, that's right. We found that out. And I also noticed they have an ease now, those two. And it's funny what can happen when you get kidnapped together Mm. and Mm. you see Tara's face being smashed in together. Mm. You see a tattoo in the back of Margaret's back together. Those two now are as an understanding of Margaret really does want her to leave. She wants her to go. She wants her to be happy somewhere else. But Tara's going, hang on a second. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make my decision, but thank you. Like they're getting along really well is what I'm trying they're to say. They're not adversaries anymore. No. They're, they have an alliance. They want, it, they want to see each other do well. How about and that? I believe, and I believe after the reveal of, like we said, them being kidnapped, I believe that Margaret's main one of her main functions in life now is to hope that Tara doesn't turn out like her. Exactly. Exactly right. That's fucking good writing. That's um, really good writing. And, and she truly is one of my favorite characters. So here's uh, this thing again, just one little thing that bothers me because it's okay. Uh-huh. Something can bother me in the episode. Machine gun fire in the neighborhood. Um, what are we doing, guys? Well, we're we're, and, 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 and let's just get to that right now because Marianne Jean Baptiste, who, who, was on without a trace, like a thousand shows. She got top billing as our, as our, you know, Kenny Johnson's, our, our, our Rockman Dunbar. She got top billing because this was called, this is what in the business is called as stunt casting, mm-hmm. where you go out to a great actor, great actress, and you ask them, would you please be on this show? And they go, oh, fuck yeah, I will. Give me something to chew on, which we did for her. And it was great. But let me tell you something. When that machine gun Charlie shit starts going off, Theo, I was there that day, obviously. She says, which I forgot, happens all the time. No one's coming. Like it had that get, where in this yeah. part of where they live in Southeast, you know, Charming or Oakland, yeah. wherever we were. It's Oakland. Yeah. Oakland happens all the time. No one yeah. comes. Cops ain't kind coming. Of a, yeah. They're not coming. It, it yeah. happens all the time. To answer your question, that's yeah, that's- no, and and again, the machine gun fired the Donna Reed line. If nobody knows who Donna Reed is, she was this. You know who she is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just this wholesome American TV personality, you know. Um, that was a funny moment with me and Charlie. Hey, at the end there, that nice little sharing again, moment. 
That's where fucking Sons works when you button scenes with a little comedy, where you button things where something, you know, crazy goes down or chaotic, and then you button it. Just the fact that, uh, what were the Sons names again? Uh, Oh, yeah. Um, uh, Luther Vandross. Luther and Vandross. I mean, that it's fucking brilliant. It's fucking brilliant. It's great writing. So Gemma confronts Tara about the letters. This is a big scene, by the way. Oh, we've been dealing with these goddamn letters. Huge, heavy, emotional. True. The slow pan of the camera is true. Fucking brilliant. The camera slowly going in on Gemma as she's speaking over Tara's shoulder. Beautiful. Closer. Man, I love that. And Katie looks, this is, Katie looks so good. This is Katie. Like Truly. Katie looks amazing in this episode. And um, this is, you, you, you have to question, is she being truthful? Does she I, mean it? I think she does. You think so? I do. I do. You don't think she's lying to save her ass just to get those letters out? Uh, I don't know. I don't know, bro. I, I, I think that sometimes the best way to lie is to tell the truth. And for her to, to say she fucked up, she was young, she, J- JT was in Ireland, having a kid with someone else, that all happened. Um, she was with Clay. She talks about that. that. That all happened. And she regrets it. That probably is partly true. Um, I think she's a, I don't know if Gemma ever gets desperate, but I think by telling her the truth, it's like, if you think you begin to know shit from reading letters or hearing what you think, you didn't live it. I did. Mm. And this is what fucking happened. So she kind of wins on both levels. Right? I think she, that's right. She's, she's saving her own ass. I think that's right. Letters from Jax. And yet she's, right. she's revealing her truth. I think to that's Tara. right. Yeah. And little does she know, Tara is listening, thinking, that could happen to me. Yes. Yes, bro. It's great. It's great. It's fucking great. So we go to the Juice and Roosevelt scene. Um, okay, so before you start talking, because yeah. this is about you, I, I wrote something down here. Like, I want you to tell me and the audience about that day with Rockman. It's just so, you've never been better. It's so good. It's so simple. There's no acting. Just an underlying boiling point of emotions. Juice is now beginning to go down a very slippery, slippery slope. For yeah. Him. So go. Just Well, listen, I mean, at the end of the day, any acting that's rooted in real life or connected to anything is very important, right? So there's so many things there that tie into my real life. Uh, the main fact, the main thing is, you know, the thing with my father. I didn't really know my father. You know, I knew him when I was young, but you know, and he was a criminal and he was a fucking, you know, whatever. And so that tie-in is incredible. And again, Kurt doesn't doesn't know that. Kurt doesn't know that my family's Middle Eastern, North African, and, you know, doesn't, he doesn't know that. So when you say that things happen for a reason and you say that things are written, you know, and, 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 you know, you learn about your history and you learn it. I mean, it's fucking crazy. And when I was doing that with rock, I knew, I just knew, I remember I could, I, I could smell that fucking hallway right? on the stage. I could smell it and go in. Okay. The calm, fucking writer's room turn cop chill. shop. Yeah. Like this is going to be, this could go somewhere. Let's see where it goes. And again, having that nervous energy of you're probably going to get killed off. Oh, isn't that, you've and, never and, told And you know what? And, and it you've was never okay. Told me that. Because I used it. I went, probably going to get killed off. So that nervous energy of, I'm I'm not going to be here with these guys. And this show is going to run for 30 seasons. It's going to be gun smoke. It's going to run forever. It's going to be like mash. And I'm not going to be on it. That feeling bad. I'm going to tell you why that helped me. The loss of that already that I concocted in my head was the loss that Juice was concocting that he was going to lose the club. You see children of acting listening. I know you love this stuff when Rossi and I try and throw some bones at ourselves that I know you're listening to. There's no acting required. You need to be in it. You need to feel and you need to get your head wrapped around where you're coming from and where you're going. And Theo's emotions of probably thinking 
this could be Juice's demise. How sad. Anyway, beautiful, bro. It was so such a again, beautiful. there is like you just said, there is no acting. You just embrace the real feelings that you have. Don't deny your feelings, not just in your own personal life, but as an actor, like I was yeah. using everything. I didn't deny it. Right. And I always reference this one scene. I, 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 it's not in this show, but I was doing this scene on the show Luke Cage that I did. I think I said this on one of our shows. I was doing this scene that I wasn't supposed to tear up in. Oh, yeah. It was like, yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah. And I did. Yeah. And I was trying so hard not to. And I went, but wait a second. Why am I as this character? Because I'm in it. Why am I? There's something bigger here. Go with it. And it worked and we used it. The thing is, is that if you're in it and you've done the work, don't deny what it is. So I, instead of denying, this could be it for me. I'm probably going to get killed off. You know, Taylor had just gotten killed off in yep. season two and fuck this is, you know, half sack was gone now, you know, the season three. And I was like, this, I'm going to be the one. Okay. Okay. I'm gone. Fuck. I'm going to miss these guys because mm. I was unlike them. We were, I was one of the center points. It was mm. all of us. And, right. you know, we were all so tight. So that helped me so much in that scene because the thought of him revealing stuff about my father, I was going to lose my family, which was SOA, which was the Reaper crew. And that oh, fucking it, was, it, it was It was brilliant. So again, that lays the path for everything. So we go right to Tara putting the letters in storage. Yeah. Gemma confronts Clay. This is um, this little moment. Okay, and before that started, uh, that whole Piney and Gemma. Fuck. Just that first nine Piney. Fuck. With, and I'm going, there's Piney. He's finally in the show. We're almost Fuck. done now. There he is, and he fucking nails her with something. Then he goes outside knowing Clay's coming, and he watches. And then, well, here we go. The scene between Clay well, and you Gemma. just said it, by the way. Let's not jump over that. You you doing the denial. You you disobeying Clay in the beginning yeah. by saying, I'm not fucking, I'm not I'm not, I'm going with you. Yeah. That's a denial. Yeah. What Piney did was that on steroids. Piney yeah. basically said, you better fucking handle this. The president, the president of the club not is the making the, the club, wrong move. The That's a big wrong move. He's making the wrong move. And by the way, I'm going to go out on the limb and turn my fucking back on him and go to his wife. Yep. And by the way, no. the person who started the club's former wife, yeah, the vice president's mother, and yeah. I'm going to tell her that we're fucking dealing drugs. I'm going to tell club business to, for lack of a better word, quote unquote, old lady, I'm going to tell her the club business. And Piney knew, I think in his heart, that he could fucking die for doing this. Oh, 100%. But he doesn't leave. He watches. Fuck. So then here comes Clay. And here we go. And, and man. She, he confronts, she confronts, and he basically strangles her I know. up against those goddamn poles where our bikes were. He basically strangles her. And with Bobby, this is all in bold, Bobby and Piney looking, I said, this is the true beginning of Clay's unraveling. Like, oh, this God, guy yeah. oh, God, is yeah. unraveling. And Gemma harkens back to the whole thing with Weston and fucking yes. everything that happened. And now yes. Gemma, Gemma's his teammate. They're, they're partners, 50-50 partners. Now he's turned on her. Clay is in full unraveling mode. Yeah. At the same time, Opie tells Jax he's going to vote with him. Yeah. He trusts him, yeah. which, we know, which we know everything comes back to bite everybody in the ass. Yeah. We get into the club. Everyone is super serious. Um, I, I just, uh, Peter Weller, we just have to give it up to, to, to the way they edited this ending with the way Kurt edited this ending, the way they shot us all voting. Everyone had a say, but it was quick. It was just quick. We just got on with it because we knew no bullshit. It, it was, I it was, forgot how that went down. Kim Coates forgot how that went down. Best chapel and, scene we ever did. Right. Best chapel. That's a great ending to the girls looking on clay warning. Piney. Oh, I'll, I'll slit your throat. Come on, I'll slit your throat. He tells him he'll slit his throat. Oh, the fucking, the, the, the song is super aggressive. Bobby's furious. 
Clay basically just told a first nine fucking member, I will kill you if you ever do that again. It's off the rails now. It's off. I can't wait. It's like put on the next episode. Can we say goodbye to our beautiful peeps around the world and do the next episode right now? (laughs) Like Theo, I'm in it now again. Remember those issues that you and I had with season three? And then at the end, we realized that the finale of season three was one of the greatest of all time ever. Now I'm in it. I'm, I'm in so, it. I'm I'm so I'm in it. Season four. I'm like excited. Okay. I'm like excited for Dayton the rest Callie, of this shit. Your hair, that my hair, Dave Cali, you. your mustache is back. It's not a half-ass one. <laughs> it's it's. We are here. We got good lighting. It's fucking. It's on. I um, I love, love, love you, brother. Let's you, go. Uh, let's go do our other show. Can't um, wait. Love you, Bobby. Hey, yeah. by the way, if you're watching yeah. this, hey, if you're watching this, what are you supposed to do, motherfuckers? You're like, supposed to you're like, supposed to review, like, subscribe, join, do it all. subscribe, hit the alarm, do the whole thing. And 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 I'm I'm learning this Patreon thing at the the other thing we're doing. It's so fun, bro. Yeah, I, we're, just we're, do we're, it all. Do not? it all. Do Much it all. Love everybody. Love you, buddy. Love you. Get See out of here.